What's up Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to every detail that you missed in the story Into the Pit. Now okay, let's be real here. A lot of these details you may have pointed out when you first read the story, but a lot of them may even be completely new to you and this video is more directed to casual readers of these stories who want to know how it all relates to the rest of the series and a few little easter eggs and things like that that were hidden beneath the surface. Guys, for this video I've had to reread the entire story and search a lot through the others too, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button for all my hard work. I'm also planning on doing this for all of the other stories, uh, or at least most of them, so let me know if you enjoy, and without further ado, let's dive straight into the pit. Now the title of the story is the same as the title of the book, Into the Pit, with a cover that features a spring bonnie in a ball pit with plastic balls uh, with various colours. These include blue, yellow, white, red, purple, and a light blue cyan kind of colour. However, in the story, the pen is described to have balls of red, blue, and green. Now this could be an oversight on the artist's behalf, um, we have had plenty of inconsistencies in the art before, but it also could be that these are the faded colours that represent how long the ball pit has been there without being changed or cleaned. Another small detail to show this is the fact that the balls actually have marks on them. Spring Bonnie looks amazing in this shot, but you may have noticed this liquid that's pouring from its eye sockets. This seems to have a direct correlation to the victims of the Stitch Wraith, with eyes that bled black down the sides of their face. And in later books, it seems to become clear that this is an effect of agony. And the fact that Spring Bonnie has this feature on the cover may give us some insight as to what Spring Bonnie really is. So the story starts out with a dead possum to lead to the simile that the town was as dead as the possum ever since the mill had been closed. Oswald is 10 in present time, as three years ago he was seven, and that was when the town was full of life. But since then his dad had lost his job, leading to him now working at the snack space, which is actually a location that appears in Room for One More, managed by Amber's new boyfriend. But also it's very possible that the steel mill that was shut down could be the same one that shut down before Chris was born in He Told Me Everything. Additionally, Oswald attends Westbrook Middle School, while Chris attends West Valley High School. Uh, it's not much, but this could signify that they're both in the West and therefore Oswald would be going to West Valley later in life, I don't know. Last day of school, we meet the bully Dylan Cooper, who is known for his name calling. Oswald would be called Oswald the Ocelot after a famous cartoon and would be bullied by sharing a name with assassin Lee Harvey Oswald, who shot John F. Kennedy in November 1963. This creates a huge contrast in Oswald's name. He shares it with an innocent pink children's animal cartoon and a killer of a US president. Perhaps a parallel to the story itself, where Oswald starts innocent but slowly goes insane through the summer. Oswald doesn't have uh, any modern day devices and instead enjoys drawing cartoon characters. He was unaware why, but he had been drawing human sized animatronic bears, bunnies and birds, which is clearly Freddy, Bonnie and Chica. However, later he claims that he has never heard or seen anything about Freddy Fazbear's pizza. What is mentioned, however, is how Oswald feels like he could become part of a scene that he was creating in his drawings. And if he's drawing Freddy's animatronics, it could be possible that the events later in the story were all just a figment of Oswald's imagination. I think the theory is debunked in later books, but it is a strange detail. The next scene actually uh, connects to later on in the story as there are huge parallels. Both of them take place at recess at a bench. But the first time, it's the last day of school, and the second time, it's the first day of school. At the beginning of the book, Oswald sits alone on the bench at recess, longing for his old friend Ben, who left town. But near the end of the book, Oswald comes back to the bench, only to find a new girl, Gabrielle, who inspires him to beat Spring Bonnie. I absolutely love this addition to the story, 
The bench is literally a metaphor for loneliness and friendship. Uh, having problems, then overcoming them. Uh, just like with the whole story, a sad beginning and a happy ending after overcoming problems with loneliness. Oswald watches a Japanese horror film called Zendrelix vs Mecha Zendrelix, which sounds like the 1974 Japanese film Godzilla vs Mecha Godzilla. In that film, spoilers, Godzilla wins, which is ironic because Oswald actually roots for Zendrelix in the film. Mecha Godzilla is made of space titanium and Mecha Zendrelix is made of a metal that reminds Oswald of his drawings endoskeletons. Other films are also mentioned in this story, including the 1939 musical The Wizard of Oz, Back to the Future from 1985, and 1982's E.T. Funnily enough, all three of these films actually have huge connections to Oswald's story. Oswald supposedly time travels back 30 years to the year 1985, similarly to how Marty McFly and Doc travel back 30 years from 1985 to 1955. Later, Oswald finds his father's body who he thinks is dead, but is found to be awakened after Spring Bonnie is beaten, much like E.T.'s reanimation after his announced death. And after everything is over, Oswald and us readers aren't quite sure if what happened at Freddy's was real or if it was a dream, much like the land of Oz. So Oswald gets to Jeff's Pizza and finds the mysterious bull pit covered in layers of dust. This leads Oswald to think about what his mum would say about getting pink eye, uh, also known as conjunctivitis, which is basically the inflammation of the white part of your eyeball, and it can be caused by bacterial infections, especially in the form of dust. But of course, Oswald's mum would have known this because She's a doctor. Interestingly, Jeff's description mentioned bloodshot eyes, and this could also be caused by the dust that hasn't been cleared since the rebranding of the pizzeria. We find another contrast when Ben texts Oswald, telling him that he is on vacation to Myrtle Beach. I think I said that right. Uh, which is a really popular tourist de destination in South Carolina. Ben also mentions playing loads of mini golf which is true, as the beach actually has 86 golf courses, and all of this is just to contrast and make Oswald's life seem miserable. I think now is a good time to mention the various modern day companies are mentioned in the story as well. There's Redbox, founded in 2002, Netflix, founded in 1997, I know, my jaw dropped as well when I first heard that, and of course YouTube from 2005. That of course means that the earliest year this story could take place is 2005, but we believe it to be in 2015 anyway, so that adds up. Finally, we see Oswald enter the pit, and as he talks about pretending to swim in the plastic balls, he mentions how some of the balls seem sticky but he didn't really want to know why. That's right, I've read this story four times now, and that's the first time I've, I've picked out that detail. In Gumdrop Angel's epilogue, we find out that the balls are in fact covered in blood, and I assumed that it was a result of the events in this story, but it's possible that the blood was there even before Oswald set foot in it. So that's a strange line to me, tell me what you think about it in the comments below. Oswald goes in and out of the ball pit and finds himself in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in 1985, to which he whispers, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Of course, referencing The Wizard of Oz. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. And he meets Chip and Mike. Now, this is the first time of three that we see the name Mike or Michael in Fazbear Frights books. The second time being Michael from The Real Jake, and the third time being Uncle Mike from Jump For Tickets. This of course being a parallel to all of the various Mikes and Michaels that we hear about in the games. This Mike has a lot of changes in appearance, but he does mention how he used to love Freddy's, and how he has a little sister. After experiencing the world of Freddy's a few times, 
Oswald asks his dad about 1985 and what Jeff's Pizza was in the past. His dad used to go to the arcade that Oswald now knew about, but strangely his voice started to tremble and he was pleased when the conversation ended. We know this to be the case because of what happens a few sentences after. There was an incident there involving six children, uh, and clearly Oswald's dad knew about it. In fact, Oswald could be seeing the past through the eyes of his father's memories. We know it may not be real, as after all, we do see Oswald basically experiencing magic when his pockets fill up with tokens when he needs them. Once again, another instance of pop culture appears when Spring Bonnie is leading Oswald through a corridor, much like how Alice was led into the hole by a rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. If anything, you could draw a parallel with the story as a whole too, uh, Oswald diving into the pit to his own Wonderland, uh, until he realises maybe it's not so wonderful after all. There's also some nice similes here relating to the ball pit being like an ocean. At first, Oswald took a dive and he could almost swim through it, as we were saying before, and it was calm, it was calm water. But now, as a fight is happening, it is described as a stormy sea. There's a few clever details that you may have missed here the first time reading the story. After reading it once, you're now aware that Spring Bonnie is in fact Oswald's father, yet only he sees him as the bunny. When they get in the car, Spring Bonnie puts on the power lock. Oswald does see this as him trapping him, ready to kill him, but it's actually just his dad keeping him from leaving the car in his anger. His dad was angry because he was hiding from him for so long. So when Spring Bonnie was holding his arm to stop him from running away, it was actually just his dad punishing him to make sure he's home safe. The questions I still can't answer are, why is it that Oswald and Jinx, which is his cat, are the only ones that can see the Spring Bonnie? Once again, we return to the first day of school where we once again meet Dylan. Before he gets a chance to bully him, Oswald stops him, telling him that he has bigger problems today. Just like Gabrielle on the bench, this contrasts the start of the story when Dylan was teasing him, showing that Oswald is slowly overcoming his problems and becoming a stronger person. Gabrielle, who by the way has curly black hair, also likes to read Greek mythology when she wants to feel more brave, just to put things in perspective. The name Gabrielle is a highly biblical name which actually means God is my strength, inspiring Oswald that all you need to be more powerful and more brave is a good mindset. This, of course, is the thing that helps Oswald to overcome his problem. When Oswald finds his dad's body in the pit, he mentions how people have been able to gain superpowers in an emergency situation where they're able to lift cars and tractors. And this is, in fact, a real thing. There was a story with a guy called Tom Boyle Jr. who was in a car that hit a biker. The biker was actually trapped underneath the front end of the car, and the man was able to, in the emergency, lift the end of the car high enough for the biker to be freed. It turns out when someone is in severe danger, especially family, we tend to go superhuman. Cortisol and adrenaline are pumped into the bloodstream, blood pressure rises, and the heart beats faster. Naturally, our bodies are able to respond to this kind of emergency, and it's possible that Oswald's worry for his father's life was the thing that made him victorious in the end. When they're leaving the ball pit, Oswald's dad does mention the empty hanging yellow rabbit suit. It appears there was probably someone inside of it before, and it's strange how he is also able to see the suit when nobody else could see Spring Bonnie when he was animated. It seems a lot of this is Oswald's imagination, but also a lot of it is real. That's why this story is so mysterious. I want you guys to let me know uh, what you think about the story and all of its hidden details. Do you have any other hidden details that you spotted when you read the story? On the channel, I cover a lot of theories about various Fazbear Frights stories, so it'd be great to have you join me on the ride. Make sure you don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.